Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. And I'm back again with another Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, we're answering a viewer's question. It's from Jeff and Jeff says, Hi Kevin, I'm a seasoned Resolve colorist in the process of switching to Scratch. And I have a couple questions that I'm hoping you can help me with. One area of the program that utterly baffles me is the distinction between a shot reference, a frame reference, adding a copy of a shot to the tray and snapshots. All I want is to create a still of my grades, recall them from memory, and send them to clients for approval, i.e. how it works in DaVinci Resolve. Any help you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Jeff, in this lesson, we're not only gonna cover trays, we're gonna cover project and personal trays, how you can get in, save your own grades as presets, and then take snapshots of them to export to send to your clients. All right, now to answer the question of how do we actually create a bunch of grades that we can take snapshots of and send to our client. First, we need to head to our user settings. I'm just gonna close the project. We're gonna to head to our user settings. And I wanna draw your attention to the lower left-hand corner to our snapshot settings. You'll see they're set right now as a JPEG or a TIFF is your option. You can choose the location that they're going to go to. For me, because we are using the example of emailing, we're gonna be going to the desktop. We can also choose to load them in the tray once we create them, which is perfectly fine. I'll leave that on its default and I will say, okay, let's step into our trays project. We're just going to say enter. Let's import some media to work with. I'm going to head to my SWAT footage. I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to say open. We're going to drop them into their slots. Let's just slide all the way down here because there is one more shot that I do want to bring in here. It's in my red footage. It's right there. I'm simply going to say open. We're going to take our koi. That's fine. I'm going to drop the koi down here at the end. Now, one thing that's also important here is that our SWAT footage is actually equirectangular 360 degree footage. So this way, when we come down and we hit play, we can actually see our footage in 360 degrees, you'll notice also with zero lag whatsoever. All right, so to, like I said, to get in and to talk about creating grades, saving them, and then creating snapshots of them, we are gonna need to talk about trays. Trays are something that's important. They're a super huge workflow enhancement. There's something that once you see how they work, I guarantee you're gonna be using them all the time. However, organization is key to working with trays. You're gonna see what I mean by that in just a second. Now, when I talk about organization, what I'm talking about is this. The last thing you wanna do, really, to be honest, in any project, whether you're working on trays or not, especially when it comes to dailies work, is have one timeline that has like three hours worth of footage that contains like every card that was shot. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is break down your cards into the different days that they were shot. So for example, you'll have one timeline that says day one, one timeline that says day two, day three, day four, et cetera, et cetera. Then what's gonna happen is that when you're looking at the footage that's on these different cards, you're gonna to start to notice things like, oh, okay, it seems like they shot two or three scenes inside of this one specific card. Okay, now that's important to keep in mind and we're gonna use that as an example right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to head to the color effects module and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in and just do a basic curves adjustment for one of these shots. And let's do it for this guy right here, okay? I think he's a good reference shot. Now you're gonna notice everything that's here is pretty washed out. So what we wanna do is get in and just give him a bit of a base look. So let's do that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make this shot a little bit more red, just so that it seems like he's actually in the desert here. Let's just pull a little bit of the green. And we don't want it to be too purple. And even with the blue here, I think this is starting to look pretty good, much better than it did before. All right, so this is gonna be our base or our reference for the other shots that are gonna be in our timeline. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna head into our trays. And you're gonna notice that once I'm in trays, we have two types of trays. We have our project tray and we have our gallery tray. Now, let's talk about the project tray first. What you're gonna notice is that we have one thumbnail that represents each shot in our timeline. Now, right now, I've reset everything back to be the smaller thumbnails with everything in one line. Now, you can work in here however you like, but for me personally, I like to come in, use the bigger thumbnails, have them all on screen at the same time. Now, the shot that we're currently parked on is this one right here, okay? And what I'd like to do is to take the grade that we've created here 
and I'd like to take it and copy and paste it so that it's the baseline grade on every other shot except our koi fish. Don't even worry about that. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so what we want to do while parked on this shot is I'm going to select the shot that we are currently parked on, which is this one, and I'm going to hold Command on the Mac, Control and Windows, and I'm just going to lasso everything. Okay, now what that does is it deselects the shot that I'm on, selects everything else, but we'll hold Command or Control, and click on those koi fish because I don't want those uh, included in what we're about to do. What I'd now like to do is to take the grade that we've created, the baseline grade, and I want to copy it to everything that's in this tray. So what I'm going to do is navigate up to copy, and you'll see that we have copy to tray, but the one thing I always like to point out is the copy plus. I love the copy plus feature inside of Scratch. I'm simply going to select it, and you'll see that we can choose exactly what features we want to copy to the tray. Now we know that we got in and made a curves adjustment. So with Curve selected, I want you to watch the thumbnails of all the other shots, except the Koi shot, of course. And I'm now going to say Copy. And as soon as I do, you'll notice that the grade that I've created has now been copied to every other shot in the timeline, except the Koi. Now, the reason that I brought the Koi in is for this specific example here. I'm going to come back to the trays now, and I'm going to come down to the Koi fish, which are here. Now, the reason that I brought the Koi fish in is because they were shot with a red camera. Now, I made my own quote-unquote baseline grade based on the fact that these files are just QuickTime files. So I don't really have any, uh, you know, internal parameters that I can get in and adjust, unlike you have in red footage. I'm going to select the red footage. What I could do now is get in, adjust all of these parameters for basically for one clip, assuming that all the clips in my timeline are from the same camera, all shot in red. And I can then quickly create a look, copy and paste that to all the other shots. Now, you might be thinking, well, Kev, that's fine and everything, but you know, you're basically just copying and pasting the grade. Where does really the power of the trays come in like you've been talking about? Let me show you right now. What I'm going to do is come back to trays, and I was talking about being organized. So let's be organized, shall we? What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tray inside of our project tray. I'm going to say add tray inside of our project group, actually, and I'm going to call this helicopter interior. Now, one thing that I should also do is unfortunately, as much as I love you, Koi, we're going to say goodbye to you here. Let's just select them. Let's delete them. Let's come back to our trays. So there's our helicopter interior, and I'm going to create one more tray. And we're going to call this, appropriately enough, helicopter exterior. Okay? It also helps if I can actually get in and spell here. Let's do this here. Okay, perfect. What we now want to do is we want to add shot references of the shots that we want to get in and now grade. Now, normally how this works when you're, you know, I'll say working with a traditional color grading application is you're going to come to the first shot and you're going to say, oh, okay, well, so this is the shot here. And what I now want to do is I'm going to grade this way that I want. Okay, we're going to come down here. And you know what? This shot here, right down here towards the end, oh, this shot here actually kind of looks like the shot that was at the front. So let's copy this information. Let's paste it over to, yeah, that was the shot there. And to be honest, what you're going to find yourself doing is jumping all over the timeline, which is a big time waster. And in Scratch, we're all about doing things as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Okay, so let's now head back to our trays. We're going to select one of them. Let's turn edit off and let's select the helicopter's interior. I'm now just going to drag down and there's a helicopter interior right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a shot reference to this tray. Okay, let's now come down. I'm going to do the same thing with the next helicopter interior, which is this one. And we're going to add a shot reference. Let's now come down to the last one, which is this one. That's still a helicopter interior. And we're going to add a shot reference. Okay, let's now do that with the helicopter's exterior, which will be this shot here. It will be that shot there. I believe that is, yes, it is. And I believe I only have two exterior shots, which is good enough for the purposes of what we're doing. So now instead of having these shots scattered throughout my timeline, I can actually look at them as the three shots together. So once I now get in and I create a grade for one, I can quickly and easily paste that grade from one shot to the others. Now what's important to keep in mind is that it looks like I have a lot of different references all going on here. These references are directly connected to each other. What I do to this reference shot here will immediately trickle down to this reference shot here from the timeline, okay? This is just a way that I can be super organized in what I'm doing. Let me show you what I mean. 
I'm going to come back to my trays here. Let's just come to that interior shot. Where is it here? Okay, and I'm gonna just do some fun grades with this shot here, and I always miss it because our guy is actually sitting right there. Perfect, let's just zoom in on him a bit. Let's see, what should we get in and adjust? Let's just do something drastic. Let's just make this shot really red, just so that it stands out a lot. Now, once I've made this shot really red, I'm simply gonna come back to my trays, and if you take a look now, there's the reflected gray that's not only appeared now in the helicopter's interior, but it also is represented in the main timeline. And much like we'd done before, what I can now do is simply select those other two interior shots now that I know that this is grayed here, this beautiful shade of red, is the exact grade that I want. And all I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come down and I believe I adjusted the grade. So let's just select grade and I'm just gonna say copy. And you can now see that that grade has been applied to all of these shots, these reference shots, so now I can quickly get through and say, oh, you know with this one here, this is an exterior. Well, we're just gonna assume that this is a night shot here. This is the exterior shot and this is gonna be really blue. Kind of like that. Let's now come back to our trays. You'll see there's the reflected blue. Let's select this shot right here. Let's come up. We're gonna copy and paste this to the tray. Boom. You can see now how you can get in and quickly grade like items quickly that now are in my timeline. So conceivably, I could come through now and say, okay, well, you know what? I'm done. I'm happy with the way that this all is. I don't need these anymore. I can delete them. Or I can get in and we can start doing more. We can do this however we want. Now, the reason I needed to show you about trays is because the gallery is part of that. Okay, so let's come to the gallery. Right now, my gallery is empty. Now, what I probably should do here is probably reset things. So let's just come back to our construct window for one second here. I'm just going to select everything. We'll just delete, import, select it all, open it, drop it into a tray. There we go. Just remove any empty slots from our koi fish. Let's come to the media browser. Make sure we set our equirectangular. There we go. We're just going to say OK. And now we're back and all set to go. So let's now get in and create a grade that we're going to use as a favorite. What's also important to keep in mind in trays, and I just want to mention this before we move on, is that we're dealing with a project tray versus a, a gallery tray. Okay. Now, project is obviously associated with this specific project. You can see all of the shots are referenced only in this project. The gallery, however, can be used and taken and used in any project that you're working on. So if you have a favorite grade, don't worry, it's not stuck inside this project. You can take it and move it to another project at any time. Okay, so let's now get in. Let's create a grade that we're going to like here. And when I say grade that we're going to like, it's just going to be something that's like hideously green because you know how much I like going to one end or the other, just so that it's very noticeable. So once we've created this beautiful look, we're now going to head back to our trays and we're in the gallery right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this and I'm going to say add plus. And all I did was I created a grade and I'm going to say add. Now you'll see that it appears in the gallery. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple other ones here. We'll just do red here. Let's just reset this here. Okay. And what I probably should have just done was just reset this right back to the beginning here. We'll do a red one and then I'll do a blue one just so they all stand out here. Okay. Let's go add, add plus. We'll add that in there. And last but certainly not least, we shall do a blue one. So let's just reset this. And again, blue, blue, very nice. Okay, back to our trays. And let's add this. Okay, perfect. So we now have red, green, and blue. Very appropriate. Let's now reset this shot here. I'm just going to come to our reset parameter. I'm going to come back to the trays. And now let's just shrink everything down just a little bit. All right. So the question now is, is that how do I take a look at these without actually taking them and constantly dragging them onto the shots to see what's going on here? Well, this is where the preview parameter comes into play. And I'm going to turn preview on. Now, the reason everything turned blue is because I have our blue grade currently selected. If I select red, it will preview red. If I select green, it will preview green. And at any point, if I want to apply one of these beautiful looks to this specific shot, much like with adding, much like with copying, we can come over and apply or apply plus where we get in and choose exactly what we want to apply to the shot. In this case, it's the grade. I can say apply and we're now all set to go. Now, that does beg the question. To be honest, I love these. They're beautiful, but I don't want to be going back and forth to the trays all the time to get access to them. So how do we now make shortcuts out of these? Well, it's very simple. 
what I'm going to do is come up to our memory and I'm going to drag the memory up here and you'll see that we can have up to eight grades stored in here that we can then take and apply super quick, super simple. What you can now do is simply take one of these grades and drag it and drop it in here like such. Or to be honest, if you already have eight grades in here that you've already selected, all you need to do is to simply choose the grades you want to drag up here, drag them all up here in one shot, paste them in, and you can quickly create the grades that you need. So this way, when you come out of your trays, you come back to your timeline and you apply one of them, you can simply click on them. It'll be applied lightning quick and you're all set to go. One thing that I do also want to quickly mention is that if you have a grade currently sitting on the screen in front of you and you want to add it to your memories, all you have to do is simply shift click on one of the numbers and that grade will automatically be added to the memories tab in the snap of a finger. Now, of course, that does beg the question, how are you now going to go in and export this to send it to a client? It's very simple. What you're going to do is you're simply going to hit the snapshot button. So I'm going to hit snapshot right here. I'll pick green. We'll hit snapshot. I will hit, was it red that I didn't have? And I'll hit snapshot. And remember, these were saved to the desktop. So now if I come in here, you'll see there's my blue, there's my green, there's my red shots, all set to go. Now, of course, it can't export 360 degree footage. So it's re-exporting the original frame of the shot. So you can now take this, drop it in an email, send it to a client and get the approvals right away. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention before I wrap up is that you'll notice that in these lessons that I use drop downs a lot. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that this can be a really finicky way of working or navigating, especially in the heat of the moment. Keep in mind that you can map all of these things to a panel. Add shot reference, add frame reference, add gallery item. You can save and recall them all from the eight memory slots right from the panel sitting on the console in front of you. All right, that brings us to the end of our lesson. Now, I want to remind you, we were working in Scratch 9.1, and if you need more information about this release, you can check out the link you see on the screen right now, and don't worry, we've included it in the notes below this tutorial, so you can get there lightning fast. And don't forget, for everything Scratch and Assimilate related, you can check us out on the web at www.assimilateinc.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.